Thank you for making Locked On Heat your first listen for your next listen. Check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Adrian Wojnarowski with a Christmas Woj bomb reporting that James Harden could explore free agency and entertain a return to Houston if he doesn't get the contract that he's looking for from the Philadelphia 76ers. We know that James Harden signed the, the, a new contract with Philly this last summer. That contract does include a player option in the second year, next year. So, And, and he took less money. He took, just conveniently, enough money to, to fit in a P.J. Tucker and a Denwell House salary in there for Philadelphia. So, hey, claps for James Harden taking less money to make the team around him better. I had no problem with it. But he obviously wants his money going into year two. Your thoughts on this report, just generally speaking, because, like, first of all, the Christmas Day timing of it was just an ultimate just sort of turd in the punch bowl on Christmas. Like, I just, man, what a, like, what a weird time to do that. When the report came out, I imagine everybody was already at the arena, the Sixers players. Like, are they just sitting there in the locker room looking at their phones and being like, James, what the hell? Like, what is this? That must have been a lot of fun in pregame there. <laughs> It was they won, so though, strange. Too. And they, well, yeah, they ended up winning because Joel and beat at the end. But, um, look, James Harden, this isn't new for him. I, I have no problem with him, by the way, saying, hey, I took less money to facilitate all of this stuff to, to help us go make a run at this thing this year. But I want to be taken care of in the second year. If you're going to strategize financially like that, yo, I got no problem. Go get your money. I got no issue with it. But here's an idea instead of floating out the Rockets as maybe, you know, uh, leverage, which is what a lot of people right. are thinking right now. Instead of just throwing out the Rockets as leverage, my idea is go out there and win a championship. Go out there and go make a long playoff run. Do that, and then you'll get whatever money you want. You don't have to do this whole leverage thing halfway through the season in December. Like on Christmas, it was the weirdest thing. And because of that, well, the, because of that, because some, it makes so little sense. Yeah. Maybe there's actually there's something been, to this Houston stuff. There's some secondary reporting to it, though, right? That shows that at least from Harden's perspective, what he loved is the fact that he was the center of the yes. Houston-based universe, that when he was there, he, he evolved from the sixth man of the year into an MVP candidate. He had the run of the franchise. He had the, the kind of power that he hasn't been able to wield right. either in Brooklyn or in Philadelphia, and that he might not. And part of that was because of his partnership with Daryl Morey. So I'm not sure how likely it is that he'd be able to get that same kind of power if he returns to the Rockets, but at least that's what the reporting states is that he was comfortable there. That was his city. He felt like he just knew the place. He ran the place and that's what he wants. And maybe that kind of fits in line with the exact opposite of what you're talking about, as opposed to wanting a championship. What maybe what drives James at this point in his career, we've seen this from other players in the past. They say they want to win. They say they want a championship, but maybe it's just about living your best life. And, and for him, he lived his best life in Houston and, and he wants to return to that. So and maybe it, it's a possibility. And, and so let's just talk about the Miami part of it, because talking about living your best life, I know that James Harden loves Houston. He's been very open about that. I'm sure he loves Houston. Houston loves James Harden. But let's say the Houston Rockets don't want James Harden. We got a young thing going. Alper and Sangu and Jalen Green, all these, Jabari Smith Jr., another potential lottery pick here. Like, we don't want James Harden to mess all that stuff. He, he's so high usage. We don't want him running things. We want to empower these young guys. So let's say the Rockets are just off the table. And now James Harden has burnt bridges in Philadelphia. James Harden burning bridges with teams is not hard to believe as a hypothetical. No. And so now he's just, he's a free agent. He's opted out. He's looking for max money. He's a free agent. People have made this line, but it, it's, it's an interesting one. James Harden's looking for a new home. Miami could make a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Um, Tootsie's for example, but also because you could compete for a championship and James Harden, to your point, he like, he'll, he at least wants the facade of compete. Like, he's not going to go sign with the, the Hornets, right? Like he wants to at least say, Hey, I'm competing for a championship. So he's only going to join a team that's like that. So I, I, I do wonder if the heat are an option, a sign and trade that sends Kyle Lowry back home to Philadelphia and whatever other salary you got to throw in there and brings James Harden back, it's at least something that we could talk about. He's 33 years old. He'll be 34 next year. The pros with James Harden are obvious. He's super talented. He's not the scorer he was in Houston winning three straight scoring titles, but he's a more natural point guard now. He gets guys involved. Yeah. His true shooting percentage last year, 60%. This year, 59.5%. St 
super efficient score, just not with the volume, but still super efficient. Um, he's not taking as many threes right now, but he probably could if the Heat wanted him to be a floor spacer. And like we talked about with Trey Young, if you're thinking about a natural point guard fit with Bam Adebayo, James Harden checks a lot of those boxes. Yeah, no, I mean, makes a lot of sense. You know, as opposed to what we were talking about with Trey Young, this is the kind of move that Riley swings for. Disgruntled star that needs one last piece to add to their resume, the championship, et cetera. So many of the factors there that make a lot of sense. Proven all-star, still a very good player, player who's shown at least the ability to morph into something different. And so his acquisition wouldn't rock the boat necessarily. You don't have to tilt things so much. Can he buy into heat culture? Those are big questions, though. And and I don't know. And he I wouldn't he wouldn't think, meet, like Joel and B demands the ball. And that that combo hasn't I mean the pick and roll numbers worked. with them are elite and everything like that, but it still feels a little bit like your turn, my turn sometimes with them. Bam and a bio, I think, would be very happy to be like, oh, you don't want oh, I could just do all the other stuff that I'm really good at and enjoy, and I don't have to be right. forced to score 25 points a night. Great, awesome. Jimmy Butler, I don't have to I can only I can go out there and score 21 points a game. Awesome. James Harden would be like, hey, you want me to go score 30 every night? I could do that while Bam and Jimmy do all the two-way stuff. Wreaking havoc. It would be a dynamic team, I think. You know, not maybe as aesthetically pleasing because we're going to see a lot of trips to the line between Jimmy and James whenever <laughs> yeah. they have the ball in their hands. But at the same time, it would win a lot of basketball. There's no denying in that. The regular I think it would, in the regular season. And I think it would work in the playoffs too. Well, just that's because the question. Because James Harden is 33 years old. The health issues are what they are. They're well documented. That's as well documented as the playoff resume. It's not good. This is a guy who routinely comes up short in the postseason. And if you're going to empower him to be the number one scoring option, we know that Jimmy Butler can do Jimmy Butler things in the playoffs. But you're still going to need, like, we've seen Jimmy Butler do Jimmy Butler things in the playoffs, and the Heat still not win championships. You need that other guy to step up in a meaningful way. So do you trade for James Harden being like, all right, we'll just be the number one seed in the East or at least compete for it and then also fall short in the playoffs again? That would, to me, would be the con. The counter to that is that the reason why he broke down in the playoffs was because he was carrying so much of a load during the regular season. But now that he can share it, he has to be, he could go from being the dominant player during the regular season to being a supporting role player or at least a complimentary player. Maybe not even supporting, but more complimentary than anything else. Jimmy hits you, Bam hits you, whoever's left on the roster hits you, and then Harden comes in and does what he does. And he can still be able to get to the line. Like, those numbers drop to some degree in the playoffs. Everybody talks about, well, you can't slow things down. You can't get to the free throw line as often as you do the regular season. He's done it throughout his career. Like, I know that's that's kind of over-exaggerated. I think well, no, he's got it down to a playoffs. science now. I mean, one, he throws his head back in the right direction at an 18-degree angle to the back to the left, and boom, you get the foul call. He's got it down to a science. No, like, no one's arguing if you like it. I just, I'm just saying it works. It works. I think it would still it's, work here. It's I, worked I think, for years. I think the... The breaking down part is mostly related to the fact that he was doing well, that's so what, much early on. That's what I think makes this the rest of the season so interesting because that's the idea with Joel Embiid, isn't it? Is that Joel Embiid is the high usage guy in Philly. He's the guy scoring 33 points a game, and he is. Joel Embiid is the NBA's leading scorer right now, I think, unless Luka's 60-point game made him number one. But last Perhaps. I checked, it was Embiid. Um, so we'll see. Like In these playoffs, if James Harden breaks down again, despite Joel Embiid carrying the load offensively, which he has this year, then you have even more questions to the questions that we already have about James Harden. It's like, okay, now, all this stuff about scoring load and all that stuff, everything you just said that could be in Miami, it's already happening in Philadelphia, at least hypothetically. So depending on what this postseason looks like, if he breaks down again, you might be just like, you know what? We're just not going to do this because as great as he can be in the regular season, the postseason resume just isn't where we need it to be to make this kind of investment. So would that drive his price lower then? Like, would that make him more of a you know damaged good, so to speak? If all of a sudden you've got another year, another year of proof that maybe he's just not the kind of player that can bring it home for you, will he enter the free agent market and make less money? I mean, maybe he'll just choose to opt back in there. Maybe, you know, his he's, agent he's will still, start testing the waters. Maybe I'm cynical, but, like, the amount of jerseys that James Harden sells still. Like, people love James Harden. He's a, he's a household name. He dated a Kardashian. Like, he's a superstar among superstars. About Most that. owners would just be like, you know what, just pay the guy. Now, I, again, I don't know that the Houston Rockets would, but there's going to be impatient teams that look at James Harden as sort of like, a, hey, we can make something happen here. I think he'll, if he doesn't get max money, he'll get close to it. Let's put it that way. But yeah, you're right. Like maybe his, maybe the value does go down if he break, if he sustains a, a, a bad injury or whatever. But uh, in terms of the fit in Miami, 
I talk myself into James Harden every year. I could do it again. I could. Yeah, I could same. Do it again. Um, same. I, I, th- I think a lot of the stuff gets over-exaggerated. I, I think, you know, there's the off-the-court style or the off-the-court interests and, and things of that sort. I mean, look, the guy shows up. He looks, the guy by the way, up. he looks like he's in the best shape of since he was like early or I should say like MVP caliber Houston days. Like if you watch Sixers games, James Harden looks like he's in great shape. Um, yeah. uh, so. it's, it's funny. Cause you, cause you know, like publicly, you know, nobody ever talks about Jimmy Butler potentially dating an actress, you know, or, or, or going off to Italy for trips to have wine or, or his friendship with Mark Wahlberg, his big face coffee, like his country music love. Like he has off the court interest. Nobody questions Jimmy Butler's dedication and work, and yet that's kind of the way the public does with James Harden. Is like, oh, he's going to be the king of diamonds. Well, whatever. Now that's close. The problem. With, <laughs> the problem with Harden is he would always so often play his way into playing shape, where Jimmy Butler shows up, and you know he's got his injury concerns, no doubt about it. But the and the Harden strip club stuff, it, it's funny, but like a lot of it was true back in the day. And now, apparent according to reports, like he does a little bit less of that now. I don't know. Well, it's Philadelphia. But I don't know how many options there are. Yeah. I don't know how many good options there are. 